Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be starting a new game called Infernium. Uh, this was made by a single developer, or Carlos Coronado. Uh, it was made about five years ago, I think it came out in 2018. And it's a survival horror game. Uh, kind of on a, like a survival horror game that's on the take on a Pac-Man. I guess is the way it's described. So I've already played through this game twice when it first came out that first year. I haven't played any since then. Um, this actually ended up be, being a way more enjoyable, enjoyable game than I thought. So, I figured I'd bring it to you. And there don't mean, seem to be very many uh, gamers that have played this. So there was a car wreck of some kind. So this is Infernia. This is basically hell or purgatory. Um, and I've just died. If you couldn't tell from the sound, uh, there's a car wreck and somehow I died. Whether or not I caused that car wreck or it was an accident, don't really know. Um, but yeah, here I am in hell and purgatory. And the point of this game is to try to get out of hell or whatever it is. And you have some enemies, like that white thing over there. There's those red things off in the distance, which are called cloaks. And basically all you can do is just run around try to solve puzzles. You can actually, uh, it's like warp or jump. I just doing that's a trigger on your mouse. Um, then R, okay. I forgot which one picks up the light. So you have these little orbs all over the place. And you basically collect those and you can uh, get a harvest finger. That's what that light is on my finger. Um, so right now I only have one harvest finger. You can get up to five. Actually, you need up to five to complete the game. Um, so yeah. You just basically go around Collecting light, fingers, solving puzzles, exploring this area, and avoiding the enemies, or running away from them. And that's kind of where this whole Pac-Man uh, thing comes into play. Um, how is my... Hmm. It just seems like my brightness is way, way up. Hmm. Yeah, no. I don't know, the brightness just seems off for some reason. But yeah, you basically go around solving puzzles, avoiding enemies, trying to get more harvest fingers. So you can harvest more light. And avoiding the enemies while you're at it. Okay. So I remember all the puzzles. I remember where to go for the most part. You got some scuba deer. In this place of hell. Ah, see there you are. See this is the, the cloaks I was talking about. I am playing this on Nintendo Switch, so I know these graphics are phenomenal, but I'm sure if I was playing on PC, it'd be a whole lot better. <laughs> and I find these guys quite scary. Alright. So we gotta loop them around and then make it towards that other door. Oh. And these guys aren't that bad, actually. <laughs> They're actually quite slow. Ooh. Okay, come on. Let's go for a walk. There's no running. You can't run. So, you're just stuck at this pace. And then there's traps like this. This is a trap. If you had actually used that lever... It would have lowered this door, but it trapped you, and you would have died. Uh, 
And I think that's something I really liked about this game when I first played through it. Because this game does not hold your hand at all. And it is quite brutal. You know, the only explanations you get are at the very first, where it shows you how to jump, or basically quick teleport, um, and then shows you how to interact with objects. That's it. That's as far as the game is going to tell you what to do. So, <clears throat> everything else you just got to figure out on your own. And so there's a lot of trial and error. Um, and then another thing is this game does have a permadeath system. Um, so you got 25 lives, that's it. There's a way to fill it up and get more lives. Um, which I'll explain later on when we get there. So I came back here so I could open up the shortcut back here where we came in. This is where we came up on the elevator. So there is no like quick travel in this game where you can just pull up a map. You actually have to traverse. So if you want to go back to some place, you've got to traverse that way. So you've really got it. And there's no map, as you can tell. There's no HUD to show you where you are, where you're going. You have to memorize the environment. You have to memorize where the enemies are. And there's all kinds of traps like this where there's holes in the floor. It, it, you gotta pay attention, basically. And I really love that about this game. I remember going around these corners the first time and I was being real scared. So this is an invisible dog. Hello, doggy. How are you? Yeah. You can't see it. But I think, according to the lore, it's supposed to be a three-headed dog. <clears throat> I think. But you can't see it. If you were to walk over there, you would die instantly. Okay, there's the blue one. <clears throat> as long as you don't get close to them, they won't activate. This opens the door down below. And you have all kinds of little corridors, too. Like, you can go down there. It doesn't really lead anywhere, from what I remember. Um, but there is cloaks hidden down there. So you gotta be careful. There's lots of dead ends and areas where you can get extra light. I think there's a bunch of light down there. And now the dog is loose. Don't worry, the dog never comes back. Once it goes, it's gone. And then you have these red lines here. This red sand. That actually prevents the cloak from coming out here. So if he was following me, he would stop right here at this red line. So anytime you see that, if you can get over that red line, you're safe. You are good. Oh, that area is such a pain in the butt to do. But that's later in the game. Right now we're at... The Fortress, I think it's called. And there's like different areas. All these different worlds you can go to. That traverses in the one different world after the next. Like there's a castle. Underground waterfall. Um, a sandy desert. This is just a loading screen. It's loading the next area. So anytime you come across these barriers, you're loading. And the enemies won't follow you through the barriers. And everything basically resets except for the light. The lights won't reset. Once you use the light source, it's gone completely for the rest of the game. Um, if you open a door or shortcut, those stay. So you don't have to worry about that. The only thing it resets is the enemies. It resets them back. And you do actually have kind of maps in this area but this is like the best you can do you can't I guess you could screenshot it or take a picture of it on your phone but 
really it's meant for you to learn it. You're like, hey, here's a little bit of point of interest about where you're going, you know. And at first it makes no sense. Like those green things are light. Like some like cotton ball looking things. Oh, dismiss. Message on my computer. Then you see that has red dots or red. I don't know. Shopping bags, kind of like what they look like. Those are cloaks. So, and there's a blue one. This is the area we were just in. So you have this space over there with the chains. So. I know at first these maps don't make any sense, but after you've played the game for a little bit and you've come across many of these and looked at them, it, it makes a lot more sense. So, not er all areas will have a map either. Only certain areas. And this is such a beautiful area. It's a memorandum. And these right here, this is how you save. So, and this is also when you die, where you'll respawn, is right here on this car. And they're scattered all around. You can only have one activated at a time. Oh, I, need, I think I need a finger. It's alright, there's some light right here. Yeah, when you're teleporting, you can only teleport to that spot if it's gold. If it's red, it's off limits, it's too far. Gold is good. But not all, not always. Because there's been a few areas. Yeah, and you can't jump. So you gotta teleport. If you're down here like this, and you gotta go up, only option is to teleport. Come on. Hey, okay, you're not gonna let me. Let me get that, are you? So I, I see a door that I'm going to have to take down, but I need light to do it. Before hopping over there, I need to go back. There's a lot of this back and forth in this game, so you become very familiar with the map and the terrain. Because you're just constantly crisscrossing back and forth. And gathering light. And I need a full har harvest finger to open uh, the door that I'm about to get to. Yeah, and this another thing that I think is really interesting about this game is there is no jump feature. You can't jump. You can only teleport. So you've really got to get that whole idea out of your head of jumping. And if you fall from too high of a height, you're dead. I mean, it's kind of fitting because you are like in hell and purgatory. You're kind of being punished. You know? So everything's going to be very difficult and challenging. Everything's going to try to kill you. And even though I played through it twice, and I even tried like a third time, but I tried doing it on hard. And hard mode is absolutely impossible. I, I, I don't think anyone could ever beat it on hard mode. Normal mode is just brutal enough. There's one area in particular that's midway through the game I'm dreading. <clears throat> so, as you're coming around this place, you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it hell. Um, there are these inscriptions on the wall where someone wrote. So this one says, M52. What if the existence of hell gets scientifically certified? Followed, Mikkel. How would, so how would society react? I'm not talking about the Christian version of hell, but a place where a place, but a place where humans where humans are made to wander and suffer for a reason. That's what we believe this place is, and that's why we don't want to explain anything to society yet. Not until we are investigated more. Marina and Dennis didn't die for nothing. 
<coughs> Need some water. Very beautiful. As you can tell us, uh, Unreal Engine. I just, I really love Unreal Engine. Graphics are always amazing. But yeah, you come across these scattered all over the place. Um, I'm guessing this is the 52nd message of Mikhail. Um, so, there's a whole lore and backstory that's going on here. Um, but yeah, I'll get more into that later. In fact, here's some more of the story right here. Which I think is really fun. Because it's not just basically thrown at you in text. Some of it is investigating. It's like here you have this strange area. And yet here are these tables. I didn't know where just scuba deer all over the place. And then this here. This is the stairway to heaven. I mean quite literally it is the stairway to heaven. So... That, that is the end purpose of this game, is to make it up that staircase. And in order to do that, you need more harvest fingers. You need a total of five. And there are these barriers, these red light barriers, or orange, prevent you from getting up there. So, I need one here to open that one. There's another light barrier further up where you need two, then three, then four, then five. See, and here's this another message. message. M89. How long will it take someone to discover this place by pure chance? The next thing they were going to try was other types of psych psychedelic drugs to reach, to reach Infernium. Truffles, LSD, roots. So, that is one thing I kind of didn't like about this game. Are these scattered messages. Like, here's 88. After three days of work, I have not decoded a single word of the text, and the tension was building between Oriel and Mikkel. And Mikkel told us the bad news. They tried to go to Infernium in two different caves away from the Val Valle de Tella, or Tea. Valle de Tella. In both caves, it worked. They followed the exact same process. Total darkness while eating mushrooms with sweets, prepared to come back. Everyone became nervous. So, we are dead right now, but there is a way to get here from the physical world. Um, and that's basically what these messages are telling you. I guess they left it, these messages. Now, I, earlier I talked about this permadeath system. Uh, you have 25 lives, they're represented here. Of course, it doesn't tell you any of this. You have to figure out for your on your own. Um... Yeah, but these 25 lights represent your 25 lives. And each time you die, a column of light goes out. You can gather this light and put it down into these wells to get your life back. So. Um, here's some more in case you want to read it. There you go. And if you want to pause it again. There you go. So basically, this story, um, it basically, it's like four, you can actually find it online where someone has actually taken all these stories, put it all together in one really long read of all these messages. So basically what it is, it's a group of friends or college students. I think there's four of them in total. Uh, they went on vacation, I think in Spain. And they came across some rumor, some lore, that if you went into some caves um, and did some psychedelic mushrooms, uh, along with some other stuff like a candle and need a skull or something like that, um, you would actually enter Infernium for a temporary amount of time. Um, and then when you eat something sweet, you're brought back into the real world. And this is actually some story, some legend of some witches. Like back in the day, there were some witches or something where they were exploring this place and they talked about it. Um, and I guess people off and on had been performing this ritual and coming to Infernium and these 
college students, or whatever you ever call them, decided they would give it a little shot, and of course they ended up here. So they began investigating and exploring the exploring the place. Here's some more if you want to read it. And here's some more. So I'm just I'm just not gonna read the, the story because I've already read it. Um, and it's scattered all around in so many areas. And some of the areas are actually really difficult to get to to get to those stories. So if you want, I'm going to try to find a link and try to include it below if you want to read the whole full, full story. But yeah, they basically a bunch of college students began experimenting and ended up here. And they began bringing uh, snorkeling gear and all that other kind of stuff here. And they're the ones who actually made the maps that you're coming across. So, which actually works out in your favor. Um, Cause it can help you out. So, this is a maze that takes you back here. No enemies back here, nothing to really worry about. Um, that down there is a, you, an ability that you can get later on. Need two harvest fingers. And unfortunately, I only got one right now. Um, there and there's a cloak right there, which was back where I was hanging out at. Um, but yeah, right now I'm stuck at one finger. I can harvest real light, and it makes this strange noise. That means you're already full. You can't harvest any more light. You need like another slot, another vessel, before I can harvest more light. And that's basically what you're doing is running around exploring, trying to find more upgrades, so more vessels, uh, more harvesting fingers to harvest more light and you can open more paths. And you get that unique ability back there that'll actually help you sense the enemies. Uh, so you'll hear a heartbeat when you're close to an enemy. Like right here, the first time I ever played this game, I actually died because I did not know that cloak was there around the corner. But I know it's there. And if you teleport from over here, you'll instantly die. So you gotta do it back from over here. Oh, uh, okay. Now he's on my tail. Where you at? Yeah, the red ones are slow. At first, it's just really scary. And there's another one right there. So you gotta loop them around. Come on, go for a walk. You gotta be careful, they will loop back on you. Ooh, okay. And once you get to an area they can't get to you at, they'll chill out. It was just so scary, that noise. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm full of light. Yeah, and see, these were left by the witches. Or whatever they were. And of course, they wrote in some weird language that these college students are trying to decipher and they haven't been able to do it. So you never know what this actually says. Um, but there are sometimes stuff hidden behind them, like there's a shortcut behind here that I won't use right now. See, they're just so... Scary, just hidden all over the place. So now we can open up some shortcuts. We're gonna open this, and this puts us right back to where we were. See, and he'll be, he's down there chilling. Cause I jumped down, so now I can get these this light. And there's different lights of different sizes. So, if you want to, instead of jumping down here and going this way, which is how I prefer to do it, you can actually just run straight here 
and teleport across. And then these are just going to open shortcuts. And these stay open. They are forever open. Which is great, but it's also bad because enemies can use shortcuts too. So you gotta be really careful. <clears throat> this is the way I came. Don't know why I did that. Alright, and then you hear that noise. That means you are next to someplace. Another area you can go to. See, and here's some more maps. You can kind of manipulate the camera. You can go on photo mode and kind of zoom, at, zoom in, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt to use, to be honest. Oh, oh. watch out now. So this is the floating castle. Nothing but clouds. The castle is actually quite beautiful. But I think I want to go down this way first. Because here you can actually go two ways. Well, you can go to the left, which takes you underground. Or you can go to the right, which takes you up in the sky. Either way you choose is perfectly fine. Um, in fact, you get unique items in each of these different areas um, that help give you shortcuts in the next area. So like, you can get the flashlight down here, which really helps in the castle. I think you get the triangle symbol in the castle which helps down here. Um, so either way is perfectly acceptable. And I remember in my second playthrough, because um, you're kind of meant to get the new power um, and a harvest finger around the same time, but you can actually get the new power, skip the harvest finger, Go to the other place, get the other new power. Um, okay. Oh, darn. Oh. No? Oh, where am I supposed to go? Okay. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, you can get the power upgrade or whatnot at the same time you get the new harvest finger. But I found in my second playthrough it was better to basically go get both the upgrades and then go get the fingers. You can go down there. There's nothing down there but light. But there is an invisible enemy down there. I'll, I'll see. I wonder if I can get. Yeah. So. See that little ripple? Yeah. That is a. Uh, the enemy. Which, why not? I'll go ahead and show you. What a death is. Just sucks. I have har a harvesting finger full of light, which you lose. If you die, you lose it. You lose all the light you collected. Now you can go back to that spot and get it. Um, that's not usually doable. Usually when you've died, it's in a bad spot. You know, the first time I jumped down here, I didn't even know what that was. I thought that was water dripping down. You know, just creating a ripple in the water. I didn't even know that was an enemy there. But, uh... There's the death. Uh, 
And if you like survival horror games, I would recommend this. Th this was really good. It had me on edge the whole time. Each little death was very scary and shocking. <clears throat> and there went our life. Gone. So each of these orbs represents one of your lives. Which is actually quite stressful. Like, lo you losing just one is fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's stressful, but that's perfectly fine. But when you're looking down this way, <laughs> and you just see empty orbs, oh my god, that sucks. And another thing that sucked is when you first start this, there's no explanation that these are lives. Nothing in the game tells you that. You just have to figure it out on your own. And because you spawn right here, um, you usually don't really memorize this area. So when these orbs first start going out, you don't even notice it. You know, because you spawn here and you're like, wait, what is this place? And then eventually you'll turn around and these will just be empty. And you'll be like, oh, those were my lives. Uh, they had, there's a lot, a lot of that in this game. Which is why I think I like it so much. Is I just literally had to figure it out for myself. And you, you either learn or you don't. You have a limited number of lives. <clears throat> and there's two endings to this game. One is the good ending, one is the bad ending. Okay. That's a ri risky move, too. Where you jump off. Like that, and then teleport to another one. If you're not quick enough, you'll miss it and you'll die. But that is something you kind of got to start mastering because it will come in handy li in later game. I'm going to leave these. You know, and there's plenty of light in this world. Um, there's even a place you can go where there's infinite light. So, and you can refill up on all 25 of your lives, you know. All of that stuff. It's just really difficult to get. It's like a long trek to get to the light. And it's quite difficult to get to. And you need at least, I think, three harvest fingers before you can even get there. So if you're really bad and you're wasting all this light and wasting your lives, yeah, you may just have to start over completely. Oh, how did I get over there? <laughs> oh, I knew that was a risk. But now, now you see what I mean. If you don't do it right or quick enough, yeah, you're gone. Oh, there's life number two. <clears throat> Back again. Oh, and <clears throat> right now, this is just the easy part, too. I mean, damn, later in the game? Now, there is an, access an accessibility menu um, that you can access. And uh, you can actually turn off uh, enemies. You can make the enemies slower. But there's different things you can do that the Carlos actually put into the game to make it easier. Because he does acknowledge normal mode is a bit hard. <laughs> you know, it's a bit unforgiving. Um, I think most gamers, if you're familiar with gaming, you know, and you've played a lot of different games, you'll probably get it. You really don't need the accessibility menu. Um... But there are also a lot of casual gamers out there. And that's where that accessibility menu really comes in handy. Because if you just want to explore, run around, and solve puzzles, you can get rid of the enemies completely. 
you know, and I've actually done that before where I've just turned it off to explore different areas. Um, like after I beat the game, of course. You know, and I was just curious to try to push it, the boundaries, to see what everything was. Because some areas it's just really difficult to explore. You can't explore at all because there's an enemy there. And then making the enemy slower. <clears throat> you know, I tried out that little feature. You know, so I can make it funner. You know, being chased around by enemies really isn't your thing. And it's really not my thing, but sometimes I enjoy it. I don't know, and I really enjoyed it with this game. Okay. I'm going down here so I can get the flashlight. Because I don't like being in the dark. And I mean, it's dark. Dark. Like, you cannot see anything. There's a one area where it is literally complete darkness. Okay, yes, I do want to go this way. And then it's literally called the darkness. Um, yeah, you need the flashlight for that. And this is the prison area. Underground prison. There is an enemy around here. I'm trying to remember where he's at. Okay, you're back here. Okay. Yeah, he's right there. If you go around that corner, he's... No. He's right here. Yeah, he's not back there. He's right here. Yeah, if you go around that corner, he's going to get you. So, that's why it's important to look around and pay attention. Because you do a little shortcut. And you can't get to me. Yeah, because he can't get to me, he just immediately chills out. But wait for the music to go away. If you hear the music, he's still active. Ooh, oh, that startled me. Oh. I almost thought I did not have enough harvest fingers. Yay, now I gotta save points. Alright, back up here. Oops. I was going to walk across that, but that's not working. That is perfectly fine. Okay. I need to open up a shortcut because that lever on the wall opens up this door, but it's not... You can't do this zigzag around this. You gotta open up a shortcut, which is back this way. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of exploring, a lot of trial and error. I don't think... There's three spots to jump down. It's this one. Yes. The other two are dead. So, you are basically meant to come down here and look into each of these gel cells and then pick the right one. Because the first one would have dropped you in with this blue, blue cloak and it's no way out. The third one would have dropped you right here on this dude. You know, or at least right in front. I don't think you would have been been able to run away from him to be honest oh this is difficult to do and there's an enemy right on the other side of that door oh 
Oh, damn, I messed up. There we go. As long as you can get that beam of light in through that crack, you're good. You are golden. Yeah, and just running straight to that door, you would never have gotten in it. You have to jump. Okay. That's an enemy right here. Okay, we are looking for a door. Door. Come on, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Alright. Follow me. Follow the leader. You know what? I can use some of these. It's very risky doing this. But the red ones are easy, so. Woo! Woo, okay, I got I startled myself. It's alright. It's alright. <laughs> uh that little pop noise. Damn it, come on. No, nope, too close. Too close. Too close. Come on. Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay. I lost track of him. I lost track. Okay. That's the problem. These red ones are a lot slower than you. So you got to be careful. Okay, come on. All right, it's right around this corner. There we go. Ooh. It's all right. The red ones are not that fast. Just keep moving. You're usually good. He'll chill out. He'll chill out in a minute. Yeah, and that's this is where memorizing those maps comes in handy. Um, and you can tell I've done this a lot. I mean, tell you, this game is quite, quite brutal if you don't know where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing. See? This is like the perfect example. There's one right here. How are you supposed to read that? You know, and there's another one right here. There's an enemy literally right here. If you were to come up here to try to read this, you will trigger him. He will get you. And unfortunately, there's nowhere really, you know, I mean, there is kind of way you can get back up out of this that I just now thought about. But yeah, it just makes it impossible to read it with that enemy there. So that's what I did after I went through this whole thing one time. Um, is I actually went back without the enemy so that it could come into these little areas and read the story. Oh, and this is time. There is a way to do it. I don't know if I can do it. There, oh, oh, damn. I need to practice this in a minute. Okay. It's a little bit of a cheat, I guess you could say. Because you're supposed to go around, loop the cloak. You know what? I'll just show you how it's supposed to be done. Okay. Alright. Ooh. Okay. Because the problem is the lever does go up. And I went the wrong, wrong goddamn road. There we go. I should have gone the right, right hand side. Whew. Yeah, since the door is opening and closing that way, I should have went around to the right. That would give me a better access to the opening in this door, but I went the wrong way. But yeah, that lever, like when you put it down, it doesn't lock into place. It starts moving back up. So as you loop around, you have to stop at that lever and basically push it back down more before continuing this door. Because if you don't do that and you just loop around with the enemy, 
by the time you get to this door, it'll be closed, and you're you're done for. You got to go back around. So yeah, so that's why I looped around, went back to the lever. This is that place of life that I was telling you about, and you need three harvest fingers, which I don't have. So you gotta undo that before you can even begin the long journey, the long journey to that place. Whew. There's a shortcut up there, but I don't... Yeah, I don't want to go that way. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Okay, there's so many different shortcuts. And this, this is just a straight up maze, you know, and there is cloaks around here somewhere. Right, I almost walked off. Okay. And I, oh, I need to come from the right. Okay. I forgot about that. Yeah, this cloak is standing here in front of this door. If you try to come from the left, this orb... I, I've never been able to make it work right. Because this is a timed door. So I need to go this way. Go out to the left, loop him around. Okay, I've got this. Beyond the red sand, you come down here, okay? Ah, uh, you need to time out, mister. See, that other one is still coming. Oh, the door got him. Yeah, just chill out, mister. Okay, now that they're chill, you can kind of be around them for a little bit. Um, but if you get back in the vicinity, they'll reactivate. And I'm opening this shortcut. <clears throat> that way I don't have to go down to that maze again. Oh, this is such a nice shortcut. Okay, he's gonna re-trigger. Well, maybe not because I'm on this other side of the sand. Okay, let's go. Either so. Ah. So scary. Okay. Yeah, I want a screenshot of you. Yeah. The blue one, so the... There's three different cloaks. There's red, which is the slowest. Which you've seen me outrun easily. The blue ones are fa a bit faster than the red. You are still faster than them, but still, you got to watch out for the blue cloaks. They are fast. But again, as long as you keep moving, you're pretty good. Then you have the gray ones. Those are faster than you. So just running, you will not be able to get away from them. You have to, like, jump and platform to different levels. Right over here. Chill out. Alright. As soon as they stop making noise and there's no more lightning, you're good. The 
smaller glowing spheres will give you less harvested light. But they take less time to harvest. Yo. Oh. That, that is strange. Strange lag. The silent catacombs. <clears throat> That's what the prison was. Silent catacombs. I don't know why I thought it was the prison. And that's what I thought it was. <clears throat> Alright, there's our next upgrade down there. And these blue lights, that's what this upgrade will do, get rid of that blue lights. So, now I can do the flashlight. And there is a timer on it. So as you can see, my fingers are going out. Okay, and then it recharges. And you can let down the blue barriers. That's one. I don't think I want to open those. can't remember. I don't think there's an enemy back here. I don't think so. At least on uh, easy mode, there isn't. Yeah. Now, on the... After you beat the game one time, it opens up a new file called New Game Plus. I think that's the hard mode. <clears throat> I don't think you have to actually go into select hard mode. I think that is the hard mode. And that, that is so brutal. I tried that. You know, and there were so many times I would have to go out the game, turn off enemies just to make it past the section to continue on. I mean, it was just brutal. Oh. And there's a gray cloak back there. And all he has is a giant ball of light. There is no point in order for me to open that. Two, two, two. There we go. Made ourselves a little shortcut. His cloak there, there's a fountain here. Can't get to it because of two harvest fingers. Now you can continue further on. Um, and it will take you to a place to get a harvest finger. But that can be a bit difficult for the challenge. I've actually never done that. Because there's a way if you go to the castle first, you can get a unique ability that will make you allow it so you can forego that ritual or that little trial. You know, you can just basically skip it all together and collect the harvest finger and go. Which is really nice. Edge Fortress and wet cave, that's right. Crap, I got no light, so I am going back. Yeah, because they have these like, different rituals that you, rituals, puzzles, like arenas, um, that you've got to complete to get the harvest finger. And there's one that I'm absolutely dreading because it is the literally the most difficult one to get, and usually it's your first harvest finger too. <laughs> it is a brutal challenge. Yeah, I'm really dreading that, and there's no way to cheese it. Um, then there's one at the end of the game that can be a bit challenging because the enemies are extremely fast. And they can explode too. Um, uh, 
Um, there is a way. I saw another gamer cheese that way. I've never actually done that cheese because I didn't know about it until after I played the game like twice. Can I collect it from here? No. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, so got it. That's perfect. That was perfect. But yeah, I mean, there's four or five trials, four or five rituals, I think. Oh, that's not true. I mean, there's like little mini rituals that you've got to do. Where you got to take get chased by enemies, but there's like major rituals that usually get you a harvest finger, and then there's like mini rituals that allow you to proceed further into where you're going. But uh, some of them you can kind of cheese, some of them you can't. The one in the desert, I'm absolutely dreading. Because I have not, I haven't figured out a way how to cheese that one. In the very last one in the lava area, I saw another another gamer come up with a way to cheese it. I've never tried that because I didn't know about it until after I played it twice. And the other ones I really don't remember. We'll just have to see when we get there. Sweet. I think if you stand under this elevator, it'll kill you. So you gotta back away from it. See, I just remember this whole area being a lot darker. I don't know why that's so bright. Although, I am playing out on a completely different monitor than what I originally played this on. That might have something to do with it. Grab you, you're a small one. Alright. <clears throat> See, and it seems like I'm going really fast, but it'll get slower as the game goes on. You know, and I did discover some ways to cheese different areas to get them a lot quicker, but. I am going to try to give it a genuine attempt to try to do a lot of it this time around. So, I mean, the first time I pretty much did it as you were supposed to, there was only like one cheese I figured out in the first playthrough and that was it. Um, and then after that, I think is when I tried hard mode and it was just too difficult. So then I went back and played normal mode. To try to see if I can come as, with as many shortcuts, as many cheeses as I possibly could. And then of course going around two without enemies. So I could read all of the lore. But there was still a lot of it that didn't make sense because it's so scattered around and it's not in order. Um, that I went online and I eventually found a website that had the entire lore listed out. Um, and then when you can read it in consecutive order, it, it's a lot better. Makes much more sense. Alright. I'm going to end it right here for today in the memorandum. With such a beautiful view. Um, now that we've got the flashlight, next I'm going to head... Don't want to fall off over there the floating castle and the floating castle is very beautiful I, I really love that area and when you get further up to the top it turns into like a rainy lightning area um, so yeah it's absolutely beautiful such a fun game I'm gonna be playing more of it in case you're interested 
you know, and seeing it, but you really don't want to play it. But if you're watching this and you really like this game and you think it's for you, I suggest you go get it right now and play it because it is wonderful without having someone else spoil it for you, but it's whatever. So thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.